Issei dies, but not before taking his enemies with him, but his path does not end there, because destiny has a new task in store for him, eliminating the enemies of yesteryear that he they have risen and terrorized the new world. Accompanied by two new companions as well as Diedrich, he will become the true celestial emperor of the Silver Shadow Crimson, Isek's harem. Chapter 1. Well everyone, this is a flash story that suddenly occurred to me when reading a review. Anyway I couldn't get the idea out of my mind so work on this quickly and try to do it as best as possible this story will have some elements of other animes, as well as some of my own, anyway, this is a story that is original and completely mine, however I thank Arendir in advance for helping me improve my narrative and ideas with the Dragneal legacy, anyway, enjoy reading this and hope you like. The Royal Dragon. The Crimson Fairy Dragon Prologue. The bloody battle against the enemies had been won a most bitter victory, a victory with the highest price. The ties that unite people are shared by both parties, there are people who have to take care of themselves, people who have to take care of someone special to them, people who have to protect their families, all of them good people, but there are other exceptional people who must protect not only themselves, not only that special person for them, not only their family, but everyone, all those around them, family, friends, colleagues. And that, that was exactly the appropriate description that could be given to the hero of the Great Dragon War, Hyodo Issei, the last Sekiryute until now. A brutal fight between the Great Alliance of the Three Factions, the Asgard, the Olympians, the Shinto Faction, the Hindu Faction, and the Gods of the North, against a single faction, the Faction of Rebirth, led by an ancient enemy believed to be dead. The original demon described in the biblical texts. Satan, the King of Hell and who was revived by the blood of the ancient princes of hell. His power was immeasurable, only equaled by God at some point. The fight was devastating, he took it to the human world, destroying and leaving half the world in ruins, the fight ended. Several casualties, on the side that defended the earth, countless valuable lives lost, as well as the innocent lives of several million humans, all for the ambition of a single man, Rizabim Levon Lucifer, the last of Lucifer's direct descendants. In the end the great demon fell once again, defeated by the one foretold by Elohim, the dragon that would end him, the crimson dragon born of the red dragon. Satan was afraid of that, so at the beginning he searched for and exterminated several red dragons seeking to eliminate any possibility of this crimson dragon appearing, leaving in the end only the red emperor dragon, a celestial dragon that he could not care about, would dare to face him alone. The first great alliance, that was the right moment to carry out the fall of the last powerful red dragon, and who represented the greatest threat to Satan. However, when he revived, after having fallen at the same time that he believed his goal had been fulfilled, he got rid of all the red dragons, and thus prepared his return to the world to conquer it. However, he did not count on the fact that in his time a crimson dragon would appear, and he would be the one to defeat him definitively. However the cost of that victory was death for that brave dragon that fought for tomorrow, for a future in which I could live in peace. The final defeat of Satan was complete when Issei became a true dragon, adopting his true form, with his power at its maximum he defeated Satan, but received a mortal wound that would end his life. The forces led by Satan and Rizabim fell after the defeat of their king and Rizabim was killed by Sirzex and Valley Lucifer, however Sirzex also fell in battle. On the battlefield there was no longer any enemy, what was now left of the devastated world was now only rocks, dirt and blood, both the blood of friends, family and comrades, and the blood of those who sought to destroy the world, and take the future of all the loved ones of those who fought that day. Victory was achieved, and now it was time to collect the bitter taste of it, the sadness of having lost several friends, who now lay dead on the ground, but the one who was still there was Issei who was barely clinging to life that uselessly they could not save. All of them, angels, demons, gods, fallen, heroes, all friends of his, important comrades whom he saved on more than one occasion even before meeting them, or if he wants to expect something in return, an invaluable friend and companion whom he does not they could help even if they wanted to with all their soul. The reason, Satan had infected Samael's poison reinforced with an ancient curse as well as his own blood in the heart of the dragon, whose life was escaping from his eyes a life that was gradually being extinguished, a young life that he did not doubt, in giving it to his companions, with the sole purpose that they would have a happy life, a future where they could smile, and where he could be with everyone he wanted and loved. Issei. Please. 
Please fight, fight, don't leave me, I'm begging you. Rias begged with red eyes from crying over a wound. While she served as support for Issei, who had a long metal splinter in his chest, the sword of Lucifer. Rias. Everyone. It's useless. My body cannot be saved. My soul is being affected by the poison. I. There is nothing to do. He he he. Dot who would say it's not bad for a useless person like me. He said smiling with his eyes almost closed, heavy eyelids threatening to close as soon as his life left his body. With those laughing words he only clung to the already insensitive body of the brunette, without his dragon armor as well as his sacred gear beginning to shine as it dissolved into particles of light. Hiodo Issei. Because. Because you saved me, Valley said, clenching his teeth crying. Crying because now his rival, his dragon brother, his companion on the battlefield, the one he wanted to defeat at any cost, offered his life without thinking about it to save his if I hadn't intervened then you why? Because Issei because you did it. Issei only smiled as best he could, while a trickle of blood fell from his lips. Because you are one of the people this world needs. Valley. You need to be the example for the world that anyone can change. You have to make everyone see that. I've already done it. Now it's your turn to show it. My friend. He finished with his typical smile. He had no malice, evil, or anything. It was just his sincere smile. Those words drilled deep into his heart, and were burned into his mind, his rival, his rival considered him his friend, and now that friend was dying for saving him. That couldn't be expressed, Valley just hit the ground while a sea of tears came out of his eyes, and Issei looked a little sad. Making Valley remember that moment, in which Issei had beaten Satan, leaving him outside, but he saw how Arizabim was heading towards Valley with his spear, not giving him time for anything, other than using his own body as a shield for his friend. Valley. Even if that meant his death, I don't doubt it for a second, he received the blow of the spear right in the chest, and immediately the blow that would determine his death, the blow of Satan with the spear anointed in Samael's poison. Valley was right next to him when he saw the spear come out of his friend's chest, but even so, having two spears determining his life, he made a violent turn, defying death in the eyes, and slammed his right fist into Satan's chest, crossing it, and then using his most faithful weapon. His sacred gear, the boosted gear, which out of nowhere in that single moment had transformed into the head of a dragon, a spectral dragon with tears in its eyes, showing a hurt red dragon roaring in pain, whose pain turned into an expression of fury, yet his tears continued to flow down the spectral face of the red dragon, whose fangs had been anointed in sacred aura, the dragon's fangs were overflowing with the sacred aura of Escalibur and Ascalon, which were within the sacred gear. At that moment it was noticeable, the sacred gear was crying. It was crying for the inevitable death of its wearer. The one who was crying was Diedrig, the Red Emperor Dragon, and in a fit of fury, he allowed himself to slightly break the seal and manifest temporarily just to end it. The life of the murderer of its bearer, the murderer of its companion, the one who had been the only one of its bearers who considered it not a tool but a companion, a friend. Thus ending the Demon King's life completely piercing his chest with both fists, something had broken inside Valley, something about seeing Hiodo Issei die, without a chance to be saved, something was wrong, even so, hurt and without remedy due to the poison of Samael and the blood of Satan, he did not stop fighting for a single moment. In a frenzy of fury, Valley attacked Rizabim without thinking, as with Sirzex, trying to kill the Satan who murdered Issei would be useless, since he was in danger of being killed, however, the one who had led to Issei's death, Rizabim, remained. Still in fury he attacked and destroyed Rizabim, giving him the final blow, at the hands of a dying Sirzex. Also remembering the words of Sirzex, you are without a doubt an angel who was born as a demon. A dragon in all your rights. I know I can rest easy if the underworld and the future of everyone, including my sons, remains in the hands of someone capable like you Issei knew and trusted. In you. I will do the same. Valley. Valley Lucifer. Take care of everyone for me and Issei-kun. Was what the Crimson Satan said before life and light escaped from his eyes, together before turning into nothing. More than ashes. The tears that ran down Valley's cheeks as well as his frustration were not only for Issei, but also for Sirzex. He reproached himself for not being even stronger, he reproached himself for still being weak, but all of this somehow made him happy. Even if he had failed to help them, he bitterly discovered that all this time he had been surrounded by friends, friends who he knew would support him and watch his back. Issei. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry my friend, was what Valley said, gritting his teeth in frustration. The rest of them were the same, Zenovia and Irina with tears in their eyes, hugging a crying Asia who seemed to collapse at any moment, the three of them devastated by the death of the young man they love. Akino hugged by her father, crying for the death of the man she is in love with, Kaniko and Kuroka, being hugged by La Fay, who was also crying when she saw the boy she loves die without being able to save her life. Kiba and Gaspar holding each other, as tears ran down their eyes, berating themselves for their lack of strength. Rossweiss who was hugged by Ravel who was static, was simply standing with her head down, seeing the man she loves. Lying there without being able to do anything to save him, was a hard blow, because it made her doubt her ability as a Valkyrie. The same thing happened with Ravel. She reproached herself that her healing power was not enough to help her loved one. Saji was on his knees, hugged by Momo, who was also crying like several others from the Seatree group. The Bayel group was in a similar way, especially their leader whose right arm was now gone, crying without holding back, without fear of showing. His sadness, the same with Regulus Nemea, crying for a great man who has just fallen. The angels, Michael, Gabriel were also crying, the Asgard, Odin was crying for his only eye, with a bitter expression the death of a good man, a man who defied the gods to do what was right even for a demon dragon. Be you well. Ku Ise tried to articulate, however his strength was failing, his eyes barely maintained their brightness, the words to describe such a scene would be only one, with the same relationship. Sadness. Frustration. Regret, and many others on the part of the leaders of the different factions standing in front of their fallen main vanguard but not before having defeated their enemy. It seems that it's over. I want. I want to apologize to you. No. I have a lot left. He articulated as best he could. The effort was unique, with his life straining his last strength to the limit. Please. Please. Please stop. You have to live. You will not die. You must live. Shouted a desperate Rias. You have to live. You definitely must live. She finished screaming, trying to get all those feelings out of her chest. She wanted to give it her all, she wanted to change her life for his, but it was impossible, and she knew it, even so, she wanted with all her might to change places with him. It hurts me not to be able to be there and enjoy that future with you. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry I can't keep my promise. Even so please. Dot ga. Dot all of you. Dot all of you. Dot ku. Live. Live for that future. That future in which I believe. For which. I fought today he said while tears of blood ran down his eyes, showing how brutal the battle was, as well as how much his suffering was for not being able to fulfill his goal. Promise. The pain was great, losing the cornerstone of the alliance was a hard blow, but even so, they couldn't help but feel sad. Diedrich. I'm sorry, friend. Dot but our path ends here. Dear friend, thank you. Thank you. Dot gra gra thank you all. Dot bye. I'm sorry was what he said before closing his eyes, showing a smile, letting his strength leave, his body as well as his soul. The boosted gear gradually disappeared into particles of light, while Rias desperately tried to cling to it, as if preventing him from leaving, but in the end it was useless, the last red particle vanished into the air, and with it it went out. Completely the life of Hyodo Ise, the most feared Sekiryute of all. The years passed and there were several, the enemies were disappearing before the power of the alliance, and a prosperous era of peace arrived. Valley Lucifer rose to power as the main Mao, hand in hand with Rias Gremory. He married her and they had three children, a united family, one of them was named Sirzex, in honor of Rias's brother, the second son Draco in honor of the celestial dragons, and the third Issei, in the name of the first man she fell in love with. Rias and Valley's best friend. Everyone continued with their lives. Akino rose to become a last-class fallen angel, marrying their slash, the bearer of the Longinus Canis Lycaon. The same thing happened with Irina. Now she and her husband Dulio are part of the group of cherubs. Kaniko and Kuroka formed a village in the Gremory territory where they built an orphanage. Rossweiss and Lafay became teachers of the Citri school along with Saji and the others of the Citri group. Ravel rose as the matriarch of the Phoenix House. The reason why they took those paths was simple, before the battle Issei had left a message, which simply said a few but significant sentences. I don't know what is going to happen when I fight today. Dot but I know what will happen if I don't fight, and that is what I am most afraid of. If necessary I will give my life without thinking about it, but not before taking myself by before my enemy. 
So if that happens, promise me, promise me after hearing these words, that you will continue, continue even without me, and remember, I will not die, I never will, I will not die even if I am not with you physically, because I will be here, in the memories of your heart, so continue even without me, in the future that I create for you, support each other, until we meet again, I hope for a long time. Everyone cried that day when they saw the message, they had some funny scenes too, in the end Diedrich himself fights against Issei for thinking he would die, but he didn't die, he died for believing until the last moment that what he was doing was the right thing, and this is how he would be remembered, the one who gave the future to his loved ones. A bright future was built on the willing sacrifices of fallen heroes who wanted a bright future for their loved ones even if it meant giving their lives. And they went down in history, standing out among those who gave their lives, the fallen angel Azazel as the one who engineered the entire war plan to achieve victory, Sears ex Lucifer as the Crimson Satan, the true Lucifer, and Hyodo Issei, as the King Dragon Demon, the most feared of all the Sekiryutais. The story of the most feared dragon of all had ended, the Red Emperor Dragon had ended with Hyodo Issei who changed the destiny of both dragons, and just as that destiny had changed there would be one more task to perform. The task entrusted by the Dragon Gods, a task that only Issei the Celestial Crimson Dragon could do, in another place where his existence is required, that land that has forgotten the magnificence of dragons, that land where the magic of dragons is fading and its vestiges are just a few, that land where evil dragons have managed to reach, and those ancient dragon breakers threaten peace. Rise from the dead. Return from the ancient land of dragon silver emperor dragon and dragner the silver shadow of the sky. Rise and together with the crimson let fall the judgment of the crimson shadow bathed in silver, the judgment of the dragon heavens upon the corrupt ones. The story of the crimson dragon in that world is yet to be told, a new series of events, and struggles are yet to take place, and the world will remember like this, because dragons were once at the top as the most powerful in creation. Well here is the prologue, anyway if you have questions leave them in the review's opinions about this new story. I don't know, besides I have already prepared the first chapter of my story. As well as the prologue of two new stories, this story and the Dragneel legacy will have priority. Don't worry, this weekend I have this chapter and the legacy chapter ready. As well as I will upload the already refined prologues on Monday, just patience, until next week I will be able to update after that I will enter exams so there is two confirmed chapters of the legacy, and two of this story, as well as the prologues and their respective chapter 1, after that I will be absent for exams for about 2 or 3 weeks, I hope you understand and thank you for reading, please leave reviews that are seriously inspiring. Thank you. If you want to get some information check my profile or my Facebook page, look for her as Atrix Dragneel. CH1 of 6 next chapter 2 hello guys. Few the first chapter is here well enjoy reading it and sorry for the wait but I needed to think this chapter through, and tie up several loose ends. I hope I have finally achieved it, fairy tale, nor high school DXD do I own it, nor are their characters, and who knows, maybe later they will see something extremely interesting in the development of this story. Dialogues. Anyone speaks human, demon, angel or fallen. Real Genesis. Dragons, including Diedrich, gods or beings of great power. Strong. Be strong, thoughts of dragons, beings of great power. Various people, human, demon, angel or fallen thoughts. Speaking. Telepathic communications, calls or holograms. Explosion. Magic spell or names of magical attacks. Chapter 1. The Dragon Breakers The Great Dragon War was over, the enemies were defeated, but something was not right, something that no one would expect. As far as he is capable of reaching, a person's resentment for not having been able to have a happy life, and his fervent desire to make the lives of others miserable. And that resentment was the resentment of a person who, for that reason alone, provoked the war that claimed hundreds of lives, and made who knows how many miserable, also that the world could live the same life as him. Rizabims had no limits, searching in the ancient texts of the elves, incited by powerful beings from the shadows, those beings who wanted him to find them, knowing that that deranged demon would be capable of carrying out the plan that they had been plotting since then. The first memories of humanity. Stealing while killing and eliminating in the hidden elven city of the human world and the underworld, the knowledge of one of the worst evils that the elves and dragons faced, it was thus that Rizabim learned about them the most destructive beings that the same dragons. The Dragon Breakers, 
the secret kept hidden by the great elves, whose power was gradually destroying them in order to eliminate those beings definitively from the face of the earth, while they were sealed in the depths of the earth. However there were still three, and those three dragons they would be more than enough for revenge against the world of Rizabim. His ambition was cancelled, in part, as he sought to first plunge everyone into deep despair by taking away those who fervently protected them, and then unleash more evils, the worst of all, on the earth, the dragon breakers to return to this world. However, something really bad happened during the fight against the Satan Issei without even realizing it. Rizabim's plan was carried out, but the fight between Issei and Satan. By killing Satan and Rizabim who had the command spell to control the dragon breaker. With all of Issei's power, hitting the demon king's heart at the same instant he killed Rizabim, caused a gap to open in space-time in the place where the dragon breakers were sleeping, which it was possible due to the direct link that the spell had with the soul and body of Rizabim and Satan, and it was the evil dragons who were thrown and sent to another world and time something that had not been done in hundreds of years. Thus completing the plan that those sleeping dragons had been plotting all this time, preparing the escape to a new world, in which the preparations were already ready. That knowledge about them is only known to the dragon gods and the high elves, which is why a world completely different from this one was in those moments in danger, having four breaker dragons roaming around in them. Ancestor dragons of the evil and dark dragons, king and emperor category dragons, the first before the evil dragons, capable of unleashing desolation and destruction on the world, capable of destroying anything, they threatened the existences in all the worlds, and now to fight against them, in a single place beyond the reach of humans was where the definitive solution to this evil would be given, where the most powerful existences in this world gathered. In a place where the colors everywhere seemed to be intermingling, a place where this same diffusion of colors gives you the perception of infinite depth, in this place suddenly gathered Great Red, the true Red Emperor Dragon God, as well as Ophis the Dragon of Infinity. That's right. Dot the dimensional rift, the space between worlds where the concept of life and death disappear and time is infinitely nothing. The place where the dragons plot against the enemies of yesteryear. Big Red. Is sure we can do something like this. Wake them up, even if we did. Waking him up would be a serious problem you know. Were the words of Ophis, who was now standing on a huge rock, and it is an egregious castle, one of the oldest, in ruins, with just one front and one rear tower. It is the only way. Only he can be able to destroy the dragon breakers at this time. Dot you can travel but the risk of being infected is high. We cannot take that risk, stopping you would be complicated. He on the other hand has a power that rivals that of the primordial ones. Set a huge red dragon behind Ophis, since the place was in the dimensional rift, space was not a problem, and this was Big Red. To think that, the old prophecies would be fulfilled in this time. Red, tell me do you think he can? And what do you think Diedrich? What is your opinion of this? The Dragon of Infinity asked Diedrich. Sleeping in a red sphere that held a large red in its claws, now of a smaller size, was the body of Issei, the Securite of the era that has ended, rescuing his soul sealed in the boosted gear at the moment of death, and preserving it for its new task. When he died, his body was unsalvageable, it was not possible to save it, but his soul was. Samael's poison had already affected him once, so his soul had somehow developed a certain resistance to it, thus managing to carry out save her. Certainly. I had forgotten those prophecies a long time ago, remember that I was barely a larva when I heard them, that the true emperor dragons of yesteryear would awaken said Diedrich from the boosted gear, which was on top of Issei's new body, without however, there was something different with this body. Issei looked younger in his mid-teenage years, his oriental features had disappeared, his now black hair fell and waved slightly while he was suspended in that sphere, he was now black with red streaks, his complexion thin but with noticeable muscles to its age but nothing exaggerated. I don't think I would have gotten to this point if he couldn't. He won't be able to do it, nor can I leave the dimensional rift nor can you leave just like that for so long. Dot the balance of the worlds must be maintained. Dot who would say that this would happen? Were the words of Great Red, because he could not leave the dimensional rift for so long, he was the one who maintained the balance between the dimensions with his soul presence, and Ophis supported whether he liked that task or not, neither Diedrich nor Albion would be able to go, so there was only one option left. Sending someone to that world where the dragon breakers had been sent. I also want to believe that, 
a new body made with your flesh, and my power again and now the blood of the last true emperor dragon of heaven. Hiodo Issei you have been blessed by destiny more than once. And now it is time for you pay off that debt. That you promised a while ago. Ophis spoke as she walked towards an altar on the outskirts of the castle. Three stone pillars, with three dragon statues at the top of them, one standing taller than the other two on its sides. The left one is red, the right one is white and the center one is black. So I will have the pleasure of seeing this dragon again. Dot the last of the true dragon emperors. Dot ha. Dot who would say that being here with you. Comrade, I'm glad to have met you. Something interesting always happens with you. The Sekirute commented nostalgically. Ophis approached the center of the pillars, and there she raised her hands on both sides, and a gold-colored light began to shine in a circle that suddenly appeared, drawn by lines of golden shine, until it formed a circle, a seal, the magic seal of a dragon. And then, the stone at the bottom of the circle begins to open, a gate opens like a flower, and from the chamber beneath the circle a single object emerges, a golden-colored sphere, inside which was what appeared to be a heart the size of a small car a more refined version than the boosted gear, with the same spikes only in ivory white. Ophis smiled at this, and pointed her gaze towards the center pillar, and both hands one to each pillar at her side, slightly shooting her power towards the three pillars. The three pillars began to shine, and from the chests of the dragons, where there were jewels of green, blue and gold, rays of light of the same color reached the gauntlet, and it began to transform, a little grew from it. Little by little, a new shape, from that gauntlet came a kind of red matter that was little by little taking a shape. What came out began to grow exponentially, growing in all directions, expanding, it almost seemed that it had a mind of its own because of how it stretched, just as an incredible amount of power was growing, and with each moment, the matter was taking more and more shape. Defined, until you are there in front of it, something that no one would expect. Tisk. Seriously, being locked up there for so long is annoying murmured the being that had just formed, and what had just come out of that gauntlet that had now disappeared, was a huge black dragon, with six ivory wings, which they spread out majestically. Looking everywhere until he met the dragon gods. Oh, Ophis, Big Red, it's been a long time, hasn't it? I won't bother saying hello or asking what has happened to you during these eons, so we'll get straight to the point, it's time, right, was what the dragon said without stopping, to look at the dragons. Both of them just nodded, in front of the last true black emperor dragon god, the last of the first dragons, and who is above great red, the last dragon that fought in the ancient dragon war that eradicated the dragon breakers. It is just as Dragner says. Dot the last dragon breakers have awakened earlier than expected. Dot the time has come for the last emperor to fight. Were the words of great red, who looked calmly at Dragner. He was the last in soul and blood. The reason only a part of his body remained to house his soul in the end, becoming in the end the first true sacred gear, or as the dragons called it, the dragon corix, since it was made with the only part of Dragner that was not reached by the poison of some ancient beings that gave rise to the dragon breakers. In the end it was possible to preserve him, and save his soul, however he would only have the power necessary to awaken once, after which he would forever be a sacred gear, perfected by then a young Elohim and from there came the idea of the sacred gear that Elohim made later. However, he would only be awakened when Elohim's prophecy was fulfilled. I do not know how many eons will pass. Dot nor in what era it will be. Dot but the evil that I once defeated will be defeated by that crimson dragon born of a red dragon. When that happens, the evil dragons will awaken and with them a new era of suffering. It will then be that that silver shadow will arrive. Dot and only then they will be completely destroyed. Dot the crimson silver shadow of hope will be born. A dragon of hope will rise over the world. They were the words of Elohim when he finished the seal that contained Dragner, so that day it was agreed by four dragon gods to keep Dragner sealed until that time came. Two of them later died in another dragon war against the dragons. Evil, descendants of the dragon breakers, leaving in the end only Great Red and Ophis as the only dragon gods. To think that that day would come. I thought that god brat was just talking nonsense. Dot but seeing this now. So the damn dragon breakers have woken up ha. Huh? Well very well. The time has come to meet my brothers and sisters at the other side. So where are they? The dragon asked with a fanged smile. Knowing that as soon as he finished his task he would die. Regarding this. My lord Dragner. There is something you should know. It is about the location of the dragon breakers. 
Ophis said respectfully as she went down, until she was at the height of the Great Red, behind the sphere that contained Issei and the boosted gear. What is what you mean Ophis? Where else could those damned people be if not on Earth? I will teach them the power of the ancient dragons and I will finally be able to rest. He said somewhat confused, but determined to end it. As you know, dot the dragon breakers were sealed and destroyed. Dot but something happened. And so Ophis went on to explain all this. Realizing then that this would not be an easy task, with the dragon breakers in another world it is like if they had known that there was a countermeasure for them in case they returned. However now that he was here, that would not be possible. Waking up now will be a waste. My time here is limited, at most I will be awake for a few hours, India at most. If they are in another world, my energy to cross to the other side will be the one that ends my life. Damn, my brothers and sisters gave their lives to achieve this and now I will end up not being able to do anything. Damn. The dragon's fury was overwhelming, so much so that the entire dimensional gap felt it, thus giving a scope of the magnitude of its powers. However, we have foreseen that. Dragner, there is a way for you to fulfill your task. I am sure you will be interested, and thus you will be able to reunite with your old brothers and sisters. To which Great Red suddenly said, the fury Dragner's potential disappeared and the rift was calm again. However that glow of fury still remained in his eyes. And so he went on to explain the plan to the dragon emperor of yesteryear, how the unthinkable had happened, tear the world apart, tear the thin reality of time and space and manage to cross to another world, which was taken advantage of by the dragon breakers. The plan outlined by the dragon goddess and great red was simple and easy to carry out. Everything necessary to face this adversity was there in front of it, it only required a response that was not long in coming. The expression before the plan presented by the dragon goddess made him smile more and more, knowing the facilities that would be for him, as well as who would be the cornerstone of everything. He would concentrate all his power, to the object in which he was sealed to remain there, as well as transfer his knowledge and memories to Diedrich, with this he could finally die in peace, while his power would be left behind in good hands, in the hands of Hyodo Issei. Smiling, showing his fangs like a wolf, Dragner pronounced the only word that, Yes, that was his response, his last word to begin to shine and then become the gauntlet, which moved to the sphere where Diedrich was. With this the last thing for Ophis's plan would be ready, if they could not fight the enemies here or attract them they would go to Haya, and like the dragons that they are, they will crush the enemies, even if that means ceasing to exist. Dragner was up for it. A plan without a doubt of the most elaborate and with few improvements. I did not expect less from the dragon goddess of infinity. Euroboros Ophis. A dark voice was heard coming from somewhere. The dragons looked everywhere, hoping to find the owner of that voice. Since they are looking for me, I think it would be better to show up. Suddenly the shadows, the darkness itself, the dark colors of the place began to swirl, until something they did not expect formed in front of them. To say that the dragons were surprised was an understatement, because in front of them someone who should not be there had appeared out of nowhere. Thanatos. Dragon of Death and Darkness. Dot how are you here? If you, said Great Red in amazement, and it was no wonder, Thanatos, it was the name of a dragon emperor who died in the dragon war. Red he saw how it happened and remembered it. It was barely a distant memory of yesteryear. He died taking two dangerous dragon breakers with him. I saw how you disappeared. Dot how come you? I try not to seem surprised. I'm alive. No, it's not like that, dear friend. I'm not here. It would be rather to say that I'm already dead. What is in front of you is only a fragment of myself. Just that. He said something sad, without however, I leave that attitude and look at the dragons, I know what they are trying. Dot and my responsibility as emperor calls me to fight. Even in death, even this part of me must die. Besides, there is a debt that I must pay in that world where they will send this cub. So I want to give him all the help possible if you allow me. Great Red, Ophis. Dragner allow me to help you. The dragon asked kindly, they could not perceive the malice in his words even the slightest. Thanatos. Dot one of my brother's descendants. Dot are you sure of this? Your power is only, I would say, half of what it was back then. When you had your body and you were overflowing with vitality. I would say that you are at the level of a dragon king, were the words of Dragner, making him see that his help would not be much, and at the same time for all the dragons there, explicitly telling him that his help would not be required. I know very well that my powers are no longer those of yesteryear. That time when I could challenge the titans. 
I know, but right now someone important in that world is in danger. Please let me help. Dot let me. Dot let me help even if it's just a little. I want to help that person. Through this boy. Please. Almost imperceptible to everyone. Having only a body made of energy. Giving him an astral appearance. It was difficult to perceive that he was crying. Great Red. Ophis. Allow him to help. Dot his words are devoid of lies or malice. He is speaking from the heart. I can feel it. Dot his spirit wants to fight once more. So allow him to help my companion. I ask you too. Diedrich asked. He had seen those tears. Tears like that are not made on a simple whim. The help that the dragon offered was truly sincere. Even if we let him help. What could he do? Our powers are with him, already. We have theoretically created a god. If we give him more power than the one he has the most. Dot who knows what could happen. Dragner explained, somewhat worried. The idea of having a fourth dragon god with the powers of the current ones, would be something dangerous in every sense of the word. A dangerous being, one capable in the not too distant future of murdering gods with little effort, a double sword edge. That's why I want to help, if I can control the power inside him. Gradually releasing it for him while making the evil dragons and dragon breakers disappear will be easy. Ophis you know that I am the best dragon when it comes to throwing seals, I can do this. I can stabilize his power once on the other side. The dragon of death proposed, if what they believed was true, it was possible that by giving him that amount of power, even with a true dragon body, there would be the possibility that Issei did not control his power. Dot and would cause it to explode, thus causing an explosion of planetary proportions, thus being able to erase half of the planet where he is going. We don't have much so I will decide for everyone. Thanatos, in life you were a powerful and proud dragon. You left your name high in the hearts of your enemies, and you did not fall without first taking their lives. Dot but your life always it was marked with evil, you destroyed, you killed just for your entertainment. I don't know what happened to you when you left back then. But now I know that you have changed and if you could change, I can change the image I have of you. That's what I believe. So now. Thanatos. Help us. Help us protect that world ravaged by the consequences of our lack of power. The great black dragon spoke. He knew that his stay here was short. He knew that if he sent that little dragon there would be no guarantee that it would be controlled. So why not put insurance, to keep that world safe? Dragner. Dot you. Thank you. I. I thank you, truly. From the bottom of my heart I thank you for this opportunity to pay off my debt. Thanks to you too Diedrich. Ophis and Great Red was the only thing he said, before shining and turning into a blue sphere, which headed towards Issei and entered him. Immediately, a blue circle appeared around the sphere, and a red one, a black one, a purple one and a crimson one were placed above it. These became smaller in that order, until they were inside the red one. Each of these seals will allow you to gradually draw out the power inside you. You will be able to draw out your power. You will start with Diedrich's power. At the same time with mine, then you will go with Ophis. Great Red. And when you are ready Dragner. Thanatos explained the function of those seals and how Issei would obtain his power. I don't think there is anything wrong with that order. After all you are also an emperor. Your power will be easy to control. Being weak. However adding Diedrag's power. He will have a careful base power. With that said. Dragner was now ready for the trip. To finally go to that long for land that he wanted to see so much and where his brothers and sisters were waiting, well, then what do we wait for? I don't want to keep making death wait. Thanatos are you ready? Dot who would have thought that in the end I would have a companion to go to those distant lands. Fuahahahaha. As expected of you. Dot you are not even afraid of disappearing. Dot but it is true that your time and mine have been forced to. Dot but I do not regret having been alive until this moment. Diedrich. Please. Dot you I leave that favor in your hands. Dot and take good care of the puppy. It's time for a little happiness to come to him. Were the last kind words of Thanatos, knowing that his long-awaited time to leave this world had already arrived. Don't worry. Thanatos, I will make sure to keep my promise. Dot you stay calm, and thank you for helping. Sincerely controlling his power output would be a real problem. Dot but now it will be fine. Thank you. Dot old friend. Diedrich saying goodbye, from an old colleague. And with that, two waves of energy came out of Issei's body, one bright blue and the other obsidian black, and these began to form the image of astral dragons, which looked at the dragon gods, who nodded silently, at the same time. 
just like them, to shine and fly at a speed of fear upwards, where a gap was opened unlike any scene, with red edges that showed a black space with several stars, where the souls of both dragons began to become into stars that would shine alongside their brothers and sisters, companions forever. Both dragon gods calmly saw that gap, a place where they would not go until the end of time themselves. Diedrich. Dot the time has come. Dot you are ready. Remember this, some memories will remain. Only those that will allow him to adapt, however. Remember that he will be younger than he is leaving here. So take care of this puppy. That is your responsibility Diedrich. Great Red then roared and a magic circle was formed in front of the dragons, and it began to rotate on its axis, leaving a circular frame and there a white portal opened then revealing the path to your destiny. From now on it is your turn to move on. Issei you may feel alone. Dot but remember. Remember that you are the one who brings hope to everyone. So if it is you I know you will. Goodbye for now Issei. I hope to return to see you. The dragon goddess affectionately took Issei's right hand and caressed it between her two hands. Releasing Issei's hand, she began to raise the sphere where Issei was, which went straight towards the portal, where it passed without problems. A moment later the portal closed, leaving the dimensional crack in silence once again. The powers of a true dragon emperor, the powers of the two dragon gods, as well as the powers of two emperors, have now created a dragon god in every sense of the words, Ophis, the, the intention of Great Red was obvious, saying that Issei and Diedrich could be corrupted by power. They have each other. Their emotions are connected in a different way. Issei was not corrupted by the power when he discovered it. Dot and will not be corrupted by it, not now nor ever. Ophis' conviction was simple, the belief in her friend. Dot and her lover, she knew that Issei would return sooner or later. No matter the time she has eternity to wait for him. You are free to stay here as long as you want. Ophis, we will wait together for your beloved's return. So, sister, wait for him to complete his task. With that said, Great Red simply walked away from the place, leaving the man in silence. Ophis, who would wait there as if nothing had happened, because for her and for Great Red, time is almost ephemeral, something to which they are not tied, something that they do not distinguish. I know you will come back. Issei. Dot and when you do. Dot you and I will have that date that I wanted so much and that you promised me. Dot and you will keep that promise. I know. And with these words the dragon goddess stayed there floating in her girl form in the immense space of the dimensional crack. And she would remain like this for hundreds of years if necessary, waiting for the one who made her a promise to never let her be alone again, even if that meant waiting for him for an eternity, time is nothing to her. She would wait, for him to come to fulfill that promise. Irtland Fury Flower Castle oblivious to all of this, to the world where Issei had been sent, a certain unique event had suddenly been unleashed, an event that no one would expect, and one that would mark the beginning of change, and with which several future events would be linked. The battle against the dragons had broken out, and only one thing was visible, the case, complete chaos. The reason, dot the Dragon King Festival, an event in which humans fighting against humans, dragons fighting dragons. Humans fighting dragons, this was the current context, human wizards fighting fiercely against countless humanoid dragons, created by a dragon that carried the one who had caused all this on its back. Rouge Cheney, who was a version from the future, and who had come to unleash chaos on the world and defeat the apocalypse dragon Acknologia. To do this, he tricked Princess Hisui Fiori into opening the Eclipse Door, which connected the present with the world more than 400 years ago, a time when dragons existed, and from which seven dragons emerged. Zirconis the Jade Dragon, Mother Glare the Diamond Dragon, Levia, a Water Dragon, Scissor Runner, a Dragon of Light, Atlas Flame a Dragon with Hellfire, Crow the Rock Dragon and Axera Dragon of Darkness. To confront them, the magicians mentioned in the legends of yesteryear in the world of Irtland were present, the Dragon Slayers, seven Dragon Slayers, called to battle by the Fire Dragon Slayer and Fairy Tale magician Natsu Dragneel. They joined in fighting a Dragon Slayer to combat each dragon. Wendy Marvell, Laxus Dreyar and Gajil Redfox also from the Fairy Tale Guild, fought against Zirconis, Atlas Flame and Axera respectively. Rouge Cheney and Sting Euclid, the Shadow Dragon Slayer and the Light Dragon Slayer, faced off against Levia and Scissor Runner respectively, while Cobra the Venom Dragon Slayer would take care of Krau. Natsu on the other hand had chosen to fight Mother Glare and future Rouge alone. The fight was tough, 
and even more so with the small humanoid dragons that gave the magicians a difficult time, because although they were small they still had draconian characteristics such as the hardness of their bodies and a regular magical capacity, in addition to being numerous. But from one moment to the next the course of the battle changed. The humans began to gain ground, when they were joined by a dragon atlas flame, in the company of Natsu he now faced Rouge from the future and Mother Glare. But something that no one expected, after an arduous effort to close the eclipse doors, they began to make violent noises, as if something was knocking from the other side, trying to force the door open. Who? So someone wants to get in huh? I wonder who it could be. It must be someone seriously stubborn. It's been more than an hour and someone suddenly tried to get in. Zirconis smiling fangly as he was flying with some tired Wendy and Mirajane. Another dragon is on the way, exclaimed the Arcadian chief of guards, while Princess Hisui was dismayed. Just seeing the situation that all the guilds were in when fighting only seven dragons would alarm anyone, but talking about even two or three, even one more, was something unthinkable and even terrifying, since there was no eighth dragon slayer to fight against that supposed dragon. Look San we must stop it. We can't allow another dragon to leave the door. Wendy exclaimed as she descended helped by Charlie's wings. Ha ha ha. Do you think I'll let my fun future meal go away? The green dragon laughed evilly as he flew towards her. Lightning dragon halberd. Laxus exclaimed, hitting the dragon on the right side, which angrily turned to look at him. I'm sorry. Dot but I will be the one who takes care of you right now. Little brat. Do you think you are enough to challenge me? Furious, the dragon rushed towards Laxus, who from one moment to the next had moved from the place and was now on top of the dragon to whom he applied a strong blow of lightning. Hey! That's all brat. That's how you hit it, he roared, hitting Laxus with his wing. The blonde wizard fell heavily against the ground. Prawn prawn crack prawn were the strong knocks that the eclipse door had. Strong knocks that were beginning to appear on the door. Whatever was trying to enter through the door was succeeding. Who? So they have finally arrived. I was wondering when they would do it were the words of Rouge from the future while he stopped one of Natsu's blows. What do you mean? Who are you talking about Rouge? Natsu demanded as he applied more force to his fist and came closer to look his opponent in the eyes, who had the most psychopathic smile, adding more impact with his fangs. The arrival of the ancient destroyers of worlds. Dot the envoys of destruction seek to reach this world. Dot and Lucy Hartfilia closing the door was part of my plan. While as if she could not make her expression more terrifying the dragon's breakers are coming. As if it were a call to those beings that Rouge mentioned, the eclipse door opened from the other side. Tromp tromp truest with one last blow the eclipse sunsets opened violently. Showing then only a large black opening, only a large black void was seen there. Different from the blinding light that was seen when it opened the first time the doors were opened, which did not need to have an end on the other side, those who were there looking, were some soldiers, Princess Hisui, Captain Arcadios, Mirajane, Laxus Wendy, also Lucy and Yukino. Three pairs of eyes glowed there, altogether bright purple, followed by a pair of white eyes glowing at the top of the door, and one more pair of eyes glowing in the center of the empty space, deep red eyes. G R O O O O O O O O O O O O A A A A A A A A U U U U U U A powerful dragon roar, even louder than any dragon that came from the eclipse gate, was heard, immediately followed by three others of equal strength, and at the same time three columns of smoke came out of the gate. Door. Three columns of black smoke came out and headed towards the sky, passing by where the dragon slayers were, along with the dragon Zirconis who had to forcefully dig his claws into the ground to avoid being forcibly thrown into the skies with the one those columns of smoke passed through. The magicians were not so lucky, they were thrown several meters away, Captain Arcadios hugged the princess to protect her, where those columns of smoke had passed, they left a large cloud of dust that rose several meters high. Ha 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 ha, just look. Look at the devastation of just their flight, they are here at last, masters. Rouge exclaimed with joy over Mother Glare, the dragon who watched in amazement at the clouds of black smoke that gathered in the skies. Natsu looked at him confused. Masters. What the hell are you talking about if your teacher is someone else? Natsu's confused expression while he was having those thoughts was captured by Rouge. You know, even with years of practice I would not have been able to achieve such a thing. Go back in time. A very dangerous type of magic, one that should never be practiced. 
since it transmigrates the laws of space, potentially altering the world. To the point of destroying it his explanation was always accompanied by an air of superiority. Ha! Tisk failing to connect another blow and receiving one in response Natsu was pushed by Mother Glare's back so. So you say that the mere fact of having traveled can destroy the world. Is that what you're trying to do? To say rouge? Natsu bellowed when he found out what could have happened. It's like you say Natsu Dragneel. Dot the mere fact of having traveled in time can destroy the world. However, it hasn't happened, and the reason for that pointing upwards where the smoke began to spin until a large vortex similar to the eye of a hurricane. They are the dragon breakers, he said again the name of those dragons, and a purple glow could be seen in the sky, and from the vortex came what no one expected, a dragon. A long snake-shaped dragon, the shape of a western dragon, a jet black dragon, with yellow horns began to spin in the sky until it spread its imposing wings, if they could be called wings, since they were only bones and some pieces of skin. A very long body with scales that shone in the moonlight, its eyes glowing, three pairs of eyes that looked menacingly at everyone in front of it. And and the power of a roar even reached Natsu and the powerful dragons themselves that were flying felt the power of the roar of the dragon just born from that vortex, which now shone in intense white. And another dragon began to emerge from it again, but this one was different, it had the shape of a western dragon, its wings were large, a body covered in bright bluish armor, horns that pointed backwards which gave off a light blue mist, giving his head the appearance of a skull only. Roaring in the same way as to remind the other dragon of their presence, both looked insignificantly at everyone below them. Just as the age of dragons came to an end, a deep and dark voice was heard, a voice that caused everyone, even the dragons, a powerful chill. Once again the age of dragons will flourish, the age of the dragon breakers, the voice continued its dark speech, while what seemed to be a huge cocoon emerged from that vortex. Bright red feathers began to fall like a calm summer rain, once again. The dragons born of Genova will rule the earth. And this time it will be. Forever. The dragon's terrifyingly calm words were accompanied by a cruel tranquility, predicting in itself there was nothing to contradict, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. That cocoon opened, revealing then a beautiful black dragon. With four feathered wings, red feathers, a disgusting bloody red color, beautifully sculpted horns, in the shape of drills towards the back, with another pair of wings on the sides of its head, thus having a beautiful appearance, scales that seemed to shine in black, like obsidian jewels, however that calm and beautiful appearance disappeared when they looked into his eyes, eyes with only a single sensation, evil at its maximum expression. All the magicians looked terrified at these three dragons that were in the sky, their mere presence caused them to want to run away, the weakest ones could not hold their own legs, the strongest magicians only had chills, strong chills, and the dragons only they watched and were alert to any movement they made. However, they all had a single feeling in common, the feeling of danger, that their lives were in danger, it was simple that those dragons with their mere presence caused them fear, fear of a terrible death. Who? So these are the dragons that once ruled this world huh? The first dragon that came out of the vortex, which was still in the sky, suddenly spoke. You see Natsu Dragneel. It has begun. Finally they have arrived, the shadows that spoke to me. Dot the shadows that chose me from another world to rule Rouge's expression of sick joy was slightly overshadowed by the fear of the dragons above her. He. You. Dot how. 
How is it possible that you are alive? I myself saw when the last of you was banished from this world. Atlas Flame spoke in surprise, How? How is it possible that there are still dragons? Dragons spawned by Genova. Atlas Flame's voice was worrying. His tone was one of fear. He was afraid of the dragons in front of him. It doesn't matter who it is. Salient Spectre. Dragon of the darkness of hell. Take care of them. Show them the power they have forgotten. And show them what the future of the weak is. That future that awaits them. With the same gloomy tranquility, the red-winged dragon rose in the skies, followed by the other dragon. You are free to destroy as much as you want. Trident Stinger. Dragon of the Sea of Lamentation. Accompany me. We must prepare the resurgence of the dragons. A unlike Salent Spectre, our bodies must stabilize better, and entering the vortex they disappeared again. But what the hell is happening? Dot who are those Rouge Dragons? Answer. Natsu demanded, attacking Rouge again, who was stopping Natsu's fist again. Tell me. What do they mean? What is this about the resurgence of the dragons? Natsu Dragneel. Those dragons that you see before you. They are among the oldest. Dragons that have been forgotten in this world. They were the ones who spoke to me. They were the ones who guided me his expression was indecipherable. Natsu couldn't tell if it was respect or fear, or madness. They were the ones who whispered to me, they have returned. They have returned to recover these lands, he bellowed, extending his arms while pushing Natsu away from him. I see that you have met our expectations Rouge. Dot not bad for a fake baby dragon said the six-eyed dragon that descended until it was a short distance above Mother Glare. At this, Rouge immediately knelt down, however, that last comment from the dragon was annoying. A breaker dragon. A forbidden dragon. Dot how is this possible? Those words were thoughts, thoughts turned into words escaped from the great jaws of Zirconis who had approached until he was close to Mother Glare. So only seven. Well, it was likely that you couldn't bring more. However as we told you, our magic to control dragons would be useful to you. And it has worked so it doesn't matter. Although it seems that there are still some human garbage eh? Mother Glare. He called the dragon that Rouge was on, now. Mother Glare. Prepare a new wave of dragoons this time I will show them the power of hundreds of dark dragons fa 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 fa. The dragon breaker laughed maniacally. How dare you give me orders. Even if this human controls me, I would never lower myself to obey a dragon, son of Genova. He roared, offended and furious, however still fearful, the fear in the dragon's voice was notable. All the magicians who had stopped their fight watched the scene in amazement, out of nowhere three new dragons had appeared, and now these three dragons seemed to take control of the battle with their mere presence, a presence that denoted fear in their hearts just by their presence. On the battlefield had decimated the effort to continue the battle. What the hell is happening to me? Because my whole body is shaking, Laxus said clenching his right fist tightly in a furious attempt to stay upright and not fall into fear. What are these dragons? Not even with Acknologia was this feeling so strong. These are dragons perhaps. Makarov murmured in surprise, still recovering from his injuries from the confrontation with Atlas Flame. We couldn't even scratch the Eclipse dragons. These are different. We can even win now was the fearful voice of Dwa, next to him an injured Wakaba and the rest of the fairy tale guild. The situation everywhere was the same, all the magicians of the different guilds were paralyzed, fear had taken over their hearts, and now confused and afraid they did not know what to do because of the fear that the evil dragons caused them. Ha 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 fua ha 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 ha. The purple-eyed dragon began to laugh maniacally. Seriously, dragon. Don't you think of opposing me? Just like several of your ancestors did quite a while ago. Eh? Hey, do you think that your power is compared to mine? I am a king. A king. While you only enter the category of lord. Do you want to oppose me with such a low level of power? Mother Glare clenched her fangs and claws, staring defiantly at the dragon above him. Rouge saw how the dragon she was riding showed fear, even as she responded, Natsu felt the same. Impossible. This. This dragon is afraid, Natsu reflected, also clenching his teeth, while he looked defiantly at the dark dragon in front of him. See this. Dot you feel it Natsu Dragneel. This is the awakening of the dragon breakers, he said, opening his hands at his sides as if receiving something he was about to embrace. Fiat the sound of something traveling at high speed was heard, and then something buried itself in something seemingly soft Piat with a dull sound. 
The noise brought Natsu out of his fury and silence made Rouge, who didn't know what had happened, when she felt something coming out of her mouth, she brought a hand to the corner of her lips and then in front of her she looked at her fingers, terror and confusion were in. His face, why? Dot his fingers were stained with blood. Dot his own blood. Cough ga. Kneeling in pain, falling to the ground on his knees vomiting blood, without being able to understand why, and then several drops of blood, red blood that shone eerily from the dragon scales, blood that fell from Rouge's chest, which he himself touched to find a large hole there, which he did not even know how it had appeared and from which a faint grey smoke came out, indicating that some fire attack had caused such a wound, since the flesh and clothes were singed. Rouge. Dot you were a great help. Without you returning and getting out of that prison would have been a big problem. Selflessly the dragon looked at his wounded subordinate, while life escaped from him with every drop of blood that fell on the scales of the dragon. You have fulfilled your role. Dot but now you are no longer necessary. Feel honored to have served the new dragon gods. Rouge Cheney. The dragon said goodbye without the slightest bit of remorse for having killed someone. Everyone looked stunned at the scene. The dragons that were under Rouge's command took flight except Krau who walked until he was below the other dragons. Natsu watched in astonishment as Rouge fell to the ground, inert without making any movement, indicating that he was dead, murdered by the person who had taught him how to return to the past. Natsu ran towards him, lifting him up and turning him over carefully, however, there was no longer light in his eyes, that Rouge's life had ended in front of him and he couldn't do anything for him. You may have been the one who brought us here by manipulating that human. Dot but. We have no intention of helping you. We know who you are. We know what you and your ancestors did. Zircona spoke, who was now with a serious and displeased face, but showing some fear and doubt in his words. As a dragon of light my duty is to eradicate the darkness. I know who you are. Your actions are still remembered even more than 400 years ago. We know what they did to the world back then. The speaker was Scissor Runner. You discredit the darkness that dragons dominate. You do not even deserve to be called a dragon. Axair roared furiously as he spread his large black wings, trying to hide his fear. I will not let them start what our ancestors avoided long ago. I will not allow it, were the words of Atlas Flame. That they will stop me. That's what they say. Ha 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 don't make me laugh. Dot you. Dot you descendants of the true dragons don't have enough power. None of you do. Although I must say that you would seriously be a nuisance in the future, the dark dragon was now laughing openly despite having said that they could become a problem. But don't worry. I won't kill you, but you, Mother Glare. I will require a little of your power. By the way, this will help you. It will hurt. And a lot. Before these, words, the dragons got into position, however, before they could even defend themselves. The great dragon in front of them had disappeared. Only some mist remained there, a light mist the same one that he saw in front of Mother Glare and which threw him against the ground with force as if he had been hit. A large crater was formed in the earth due to the blow, and immediately above the fallen Mother Glare, the great eastern dragon appeared, stomping with force with its front paws, while a purple mist that came out of the dark dragon's mouth entered. In the mouth of the fallen dragon. Natsu. Mother Glare. Atlas Flame immediately roared when he saw his friend's son being suddenly attacked making the other dragons react who did not know what was happening. A second before the great dragon was in front of them and the next in a blink the dragon had disappeared and at the same time had hit one of them, all under their noses without them being able to do anything. Fire Dragon Roar. Against all odds, a loud roar of fire went against the purple dragon, colliding violently and causing an explosion. Suck that cheap dragon exclaimed Natsu as he jumped again to attack. All the dragons watched Natsu's actions in amazement. I don't care if you are an ancient dragon or a dragon from the future. If you are a dragon, my magic taught by my father will definitely make you fall. He bellowed while landing another strong blow against the face of the dragon, which had come out of the smoke of the explosion with the intention of devouring him. Pru U the strong blow of Natsu's fire fist hit the target, making the dragon stop its actions. Everyone looked amazed, a human, a human had raised his fists against a dragon, a dark dragon no more. Although the magicians were only amazed by the courage shown by the fire dragon slayer, the dragons on the other hand were amazed. If I and a dragon fight against you, there is nothing we can't do. My power and your power will be enough to curse you. Dot you will pay for Rouge's death, he roared, lighting his fists on fire and launching himself against his enemy once again. 
To think that I would let you attack me. My scales are not completely hardened yet. Dot, but to think that you could scratch them. Even in that weak state. I guess I will kill you too. The dragon murmured to himself in a calm manner, as if it were the most natural in the world. At the same time as his single spear, which ended in a sharp spearhead, he moved with the intention of impaling Natsu. Tromp. Looking indifferently at where the tip of his tail had hit, withdrawing it at the same time that some rocks and debris fell, there where the tip of his tail had impacted, hey, it seems like you were saved, Atlas Flame, be sure of your decision. I murmur with a tranquility that would scare anyone as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Uncle, exclaimed Natsu, who was held in the grip of Atlas Flame's fiery claws. Ah, uh, that was close, thank you. Thank you. That's all you'll say. Brat, you were about to die you know. Dot and maybe you have the slightest idea who you were attacking, he claimed without looking at Natsu, keeping his eyes fixed on the dark dragon. I don't need to know. I don't need to know anything about those who only want destruction also looking at the dragon in the crater, as it rose into the sky, leaving Mother Glare there in the crater. Impulsive brat. It's obvious that Igniel raised you, but it seems that he hasn't told you. Dot the dragon up there, is a forbidden dragon, a breaker dragon. To summarize, they only seek the destruction of all things. Animals, humans and dragons everything. He explained, having flown away from the dragon, whom he kept looking at, attentive to any movement. Natsu saw his dragon uncle, who maintained a serious voice and expression at all times, indicating that he was not playing. They are dragons that break the balance of good and evil. Beings banished and exterminated for seeking such destruction. I will tell you now. Neither you, nor any dragon or slayer dragon will be able to stop them. No one. The words spoken by the dragon were listened to attentively by all the magicians, through the telepathic communication that the guild had. To say that everyone was scared was an understatement, because a dragon itself alive and with all its power said that, and having seen the power of the dragons, their destructive power and now hearing that not all of them together would be able to beat it. Like we can't beat him. Of course we can, man, if we all fight, we'll be able to do it, Natsu insisted again, while he fired his fists, leaving aside the fear he felt a moment ago. Being naive can be the maximum expression of innocence in this world. However, being naive sooner or later will lead to death. Be that as it may. Because they don't try. Dot the truth is that destroying them all would be boring to kill them all at once. So why don't you entertain me for a while eh? Saying that the dragon lowered itself to a level where it was almost touching the ground. Uncle. I don't know who those dragons are, but if they seek to destroy everything then they threaten my friends, my guild, my family. Dot and those who seek to harm my family. They are my enemies releasing the dragon's grip, letting himself fall, while lighting his fists on fire. It doesn't matter if they are gods or dragons. If they threaten my friends. They are the enemy, and we crush the enemies. He roared, without realizing that Atlas Flame stood next to him, carrying him on top of him, his head. Don't think I'll let you act on your own. Dot son of Igniel, it's not bad. I have an honor to protect. Dot the honor as a dragon by fulfilling the oath to fight against the dark dragons. Both preparing their attack, inhaling until their breasts were swollen full of air turning into fire. Don't think you'll have an easy time, damn dragon breaker. I'll reduce you to ashes with my flames from hell. Both dragon and dragon slayer let out a powerful roar that merged with that of the other, thus creating a tornado of fire that went against their target as they rushed towards it. Tromp trao fi i u u u u u t the fire tornado hit its target causing a powerful shock wave that occurred from the impact, turning the few standing buildings in the city into more rubble. Several magicians created barriers to avoid being hit by the shockwave. We hit him standing on his uncle's head he watched as the crater burned, as the rock itself turned into ashes. Don't trust yourself. Natsu. That attack should have been nothing to him. It's impossible for him to have fallen with that. He said with a serious expression, showing that games had no place in this fight. If we want to have a chance at less stay alive. Dot and thus have a tomorrow to fight for. Ha 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 ha. Dot not bad Atlas Flame A. Eh? Dot now that I remember there was a titan called Atlas on the other side, a very complicated guy. Strong, but I'm telling you right away. I've defeated hundreds of dragons stronger than you. He moment paw. Interrupting his monologue, he closed his mouth upon receiving the impact of four roars at the same time, one of water, one of light, darkness and another of rocks. Troomp the earth trembled. 
The air vibrated. Everything shook. Showing how strong this power was. The power of the dragons fighting seriously. The explosion from the clash of the four roars caused an explosion larger than that of Natsu and Atlas fire, enlarging the crater where the dark dragon was. Hey Mother Glare. Are you okay? Krau asked, stepping hard on the ground which opened, revealing a dome of rock, which opened revealing the aforementioned dragon. Somewhat shaken. But I'm fine. I don't know what I've done. But I don't feel any change in my body. But seriously, they will fight against someone like him. Still stunned by the explosion, he got up from the ground, rising into the air with a flutter of his wings. We may have returned because of that wizard. Dot, but still regardless of why we are here. Dot, our honor as dragons, we promise to take care of this world. Even if thousands of years have passed, that was the promise made by the dragons. Dot, and eliminating it was part of protecting the dark dragons, so even if I'm going to die. I prefer to do it fighting and if I die then at least I'll take my enemy with me, burning more intensely than before, Atlas Flame was now shining like a nova. I am a dragon of darkness. My ancestors were the ones who fought the hardest to eradicate this evil. Dark dragons must disappear. Dot and as a dragon of darkness. My duty is to protect the darkness of this world. Axair merged with the night and gave the darkness a faint white glow. The ancient promise for a world to live in. Protect it from evil. No matter the time, a promise between dragons is a promise. I will fight no matter what, gathering spheres of green energy around him Zirconis looked defiantly at the crater. I don't have much to say, except that I will protect this world from you. Dot for the ancient promise of the dragons. To safeguard this world from you dark dragons. Levia was beginning to be surrounded by some clouds as if a small storm was forming around it. The light must purge the darkness. My duty is clear to send you to the abyss once again Dragon Breaker. Scissor Runner began to shine and a circle of light formed on his head and tail simulating two enormous saws, made of light. I must fight regardless of the enemy, when it comes to my honor I will fight. I have to get even for the damn blow you gave me. Mother Glare, now recovered, began to cover her body with diamond scales that shone white in the dim light of the moon. The rock mountains are my home. Dot you seek to destroy them. I will fight to protect them. Dot and I will return you to the place where you should never have come from. Growing larger and with a new, more agile appearance, Krau prepared for battle. Very well Natsu still on top of his uncle, not feeling bothered by the heat, bumped his fists and looked up at the sky listen to me everyone. Prepare for whatever. Tonight we will fight to see tomorrow. The battle is not over yet and this time the dragons are on our side. If it's Salamander who says that. If there is still something to fight for. He 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 he. I don't see why it can't be fun. Gajil jumping towards a building Lily. Let's go. And at the call the named Exceed takes flight and he takes Gajil by the back, lifting him into the skies, heading towards the dragons to fight. If those two fight, I'll go too. Dot old man, take care of everyone in the meantime. Take out the wounded while the fight hasn't started Laxus turned into lightning and stood next to Gajil. So Natsu. Salamander would fight. It would be an excellent opportunity to escape. Dot but looking towards the sky. Cobra smiled listlessly it would be problematic if the world ends. If something can be done I will do it. Then. And he quickly ran away to catch up. To the dragon slayers of iron and lightning. Don't forget about a sting quickly passed by Rouge who were carried by Lecter and Frog respectively. Soon catching up with the other dragon slayers. The fight continues. Very well. All the wounded. Get them out of here quickly. Get everyone out. The rest of you who are in a position to fight, regroup, we will go to provide support to the dragons and the dragon slayers were the orders of Master Makarov, he gave, suddenly becoming a large titan as well, and beginning to walk into battle. The master's voice was immediately transmitted and like him, the masters of the different guilds throughout the city gave the same order, preparing for a tough battle against a common enemy of them and the dragons, oblivious to what was happening in the crater in which a fiery tornado was still burning. Fa fa fa. Fua ha 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 ha. A maniacal laughter began to be heard inside the fire tornado, where six bright purple eyes began to shine, as did a fanged smile. Interesting. Interesting. Extremely interesting. An alliance between dragons and humans. I had never seen this before. While still inside the fire tornado, he laughed and waited to see what was going to happen in the calmest way. Well, everyone listen to me. We must all attack. Dragons and Slayer Dragons together. If we combine our forces, 
We can do it with those words Natsu set his body on fire, becoming one more flame on Atlas's back. Listen everyone. What this dwarf says is true. Only by fighting will we all have a chance so this time. Let's fight with a common goal. Defeat this dragon breaker. The words of Atlas flame, while making the intensity grow of their flames, were heard by all the dragons, who silently nodded. When the dragon slayer arrived they surprised what normal humans did not. This was no longer a fight between three sides but two, the dragons and slayer dragons against their enemy the dragon breaker. Now everyone prepare, once the tornado stops, prepare your best blows, we must hit it in sequence. Do not hold back, however, exclaimed Natsu who raised his magical power to the maximum. The same did the dragons and the dragon slayers, and behind them several of the teachers and some magicians ready to launch their attacks. Well, well on we go. Entertain me more. Entertain me on the day I wake up. Until his body can't take it anymore. And spreading his wings wide, getting rid of the powerful tornado of fire, with simply steam coming out of him, his enemy appeared. Showing itself unharmed by the previous attack, forming what appeared to be the infinity symbol. Infernal supernova. Natsu jumped as high as he could, propelled by the flames he had eaten a moment ago. Shining in the sky like a small sun his uncle fell like a meteor against spectra which caused the crater to grow even more. ga a -u -u. True the magicians who were nearby had to raise a large barrier of rocks covered by different types of magic to avoid being hit by the engulfing inferno that had been released by the dragon's attack. Commit this, you bastard. Dragon Slayer's secret art, hidden fire form, crimson lotus, sword of the phoenix, joining his hands above his head, forming an immense column of golden fire more than 50 meters high, bringing that same column forward, which looked like an enormous sword, wrapped in circles of fire. ga a -u -u. Again a great wave occurred throughout the terrain, not as strong as that of the dragon, but of considerable magnitude. With this the way is open. Everyone. Give him with everything you have. Now is the time. Coming out like a meteor engulfed in fire, with the rest of the top of his clothes charred except for the scarf, he emerged from the large dome of fire that had now formed. Attack and don't let him breathe, bellowed the great fire dragon that a second before Natsu's blow had emerged from the crater, still burning in infernal flames. Darkness can engulf even the very light. Fused with shadows Axair shone in faint blue. Disappears into the depths of the abyss break of perdition. A large black sphere glowing in faint blue formed on what appeared to be Axair's outstretched wings. Never underestimate the power of shadows, exclaimed Rouge who jumped, wrapped in a swirl of shadows. Secret art of the dragon slayer. Bat's twin fangs. And wings appeared on Rouge's back, which closed, enclosing Rouge in a cocoon, who fell behind the attack, while her cocoon took the shape of a drill, which engulfed the sphere, forming a sphere with purple threads in it. If the crater had already engulfed a third of the city, now it was more than half. Dagu o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o n a new roar was felt in the city, in the ruins of what remained of the city, increasing the dimensions of the dome, turning this dome of fire into a dome of dark fire. Even if they continue to attack you, dot the strength will increase if I lock you in. Crow extended his rock wings, rubble fell, stepping hard on the ground, while rocks and dirt began to rise through them, no matter that they attack him without thinking about the consequences. It must fall now and here. Great burial of the mountains, and from the ground, around the dome of dark fire, great piles of rubble and earth rose up surrounding the dome, while also sinking it into the ground. There is no dragon for me, however I know that this will accompany your pile of rocks idea quite well. Also jumping, the Iron Slayer dragon was on Crow's head. Dragon Slayer secret art. Thousand earth prison pillars. Falling against the ground, right in front of Crow, he buried his right fist as deep as he could. 